Welcome to another video I had absolutely zero intentions of making. I didn't want to address the subject because it's such a sensitive topic. I want my channel to be a place where people come to wind down and not have to worry about any drama. Here's what just happened that changed my mind. I just finished up a mom lecture with my 14 year old trying to express the importance of forming your own opinion, not giving in to peer pressure, do your own research, and not let other people influence you. This is a lesson that I wish I would have been taught early on in life, and I want her to be strong and independent. So when I finished my mom talk, I realized there are other ways to go about approaching what I want to talk about today. So at the end of May 2023, a study was released. It was conducted by North Carolina State University, and it was done on sucralose. Researchers actually did eight different types of studies on sucralose and sucralose 6 acetate, which is actually a chemical byproduct of sucralose. These experiments were actually in vitro experiments. They were conducted in a little petri dish. So not on mice, not on any living mammal. What the researchers ended up concluding from the study was that sucralose can cause damage to your DNA over time. They're saying that it is genotoxic. They also state that it can cause an increased risk of cancer and leaky gut or issues with your gut microbiome. I'm going to link the research article below so that you can look through it yourself. You can form your own opinion. After I had read over the journal article multiple times because it is extremely scientific. I then went online and looked for articles by publications that were reputable. I wanted facts. I wanted them clearly stated and I didn't want someone else's opinion. I didn't want the clickbait headline, the scare tactic to make me read the article. Just the facts, ma'am. It was actually then when I was looking for other articles to read that I found tons of misinformation. Before I get into that, let me just state what conclusion I came to. I do not plan on giving up sucralose until more information, more studies are done. Personally, I feel like this is the best decision for me. And of course, you need to form your own opinion and do what's best for you and your health. Now, for a little bit of information on me and why I came to this conclusion, I don't have the best relationship with food. I was classified as morbidly obese. January of 2006, I underwent gastric bypass or RNY and I lost a significant amount of weight. Over the next 10 to 13 years, I did manage to gain back a large chunk of that. By spring of 2019, I was back up to 232 pounds, and that's when I began a keto slash low carb lifestyle. Over the next few months, I did manage to drop the weight I had gained. Fall, of 2021 was the big punch in the gut. I was diagnosed out of nowhere, no family history, as a type 1 diabetic. In early 2022, around February or March, I had a positive ANA screen, which shows I have an autoimmune disease. As a type 1 diabetic, that means that my pancreas is no longer producing insulin. I will always have to inject it myself. The insulin that I inject is what's going to control my blood sugar. Keeping my glucose levels at a manageable number is what is most important, meaning sugar, carbs, not my friend. I have to look for other alternatives since table sugar is 
literally off the table now unless I have a blood sugar low. Artificial sweeteners, sugar alcohols, and things like that are the way I have to go. And it's not just me as a type 1 diabetic. There are millions of type 2 diabetics that also depend on these types of sweeteners. I have chose to not give up sucralose because it is one of just a small handful of sweeteners that does not spike my blood glucose. Are there better options out there? Possibly. There is research on all of these, good and bad. It all comes down to how you interpret it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not over here sucking down gallons of sucralose over the course of a day. But if it's in a soda I'm drinking, and I'm only having that soda once every two or three days, and it's not spiking my blood sugar, I'm okay with that. Now, let me quickly just touch on some of the misinformation that I came across. A lot of the news articles and influencers were citing old research. They basically didn't just stick to what was found in this study, and it was really confusing for a lot of people. The one thing that angered me the most. A lot of publications, massive influencers over here, were saying the study that was done was conducted on Splenda. Splenda's a name brand, just like Charmin is a name brand of toilet paper. Kleenex is a name brand of tissues. Splenda, name brand. They have dozens of different products. Stevia, they have monk fruit, and none of those contain sucralose. But the big bad villain in the majority of these clickbait pieces, Splenda. I saw so many thumbnails. It's over for Splenda. It's the end for Splenda. Shame on you. This particular one is Splenda liquid. The main ingredient, sucralose. One eighth teaspoon is the equivalent of two teaspoons of sugar. This does not spike me as a type 1 diabetic. I wear a continuous blood glucose monitor, not to biohack my diet or lifestyle, but because as a diabetic, this tool helps me to survive. I did a little experiment this morning. I checked my blood sugar and then I took a serving of the liquid sucralose from Splenda, one eighth of a teaspoon. Then every so often, I would check my blood sugar to see if this was gonna spike me. I went all the way to the one hour mark. I have to use what tools are available for me and my lifestyle. Now, while I'm on the topic of things that made me go, really, did you just say that? I ended up watching a few videos that came up in my suggestions. You know how it is. You search something once, you're gonna get tons of recommendations. I watched as someone with a huge name over here on YouTube said, if given the choice between sucralose and sugar, that they would probably choose sugar, white table sugar. Do you know how many studies have been done on sugar that are also negative? There are studies that suggest it does have addictive properties. Anyone that has ever gone through the keto flu can back me up on the fact that you can go through sugar withdrawals. Sugar has been linked to obesity, type 2 diabetes, weight gain, inflammation, gut microbiome breakdown, the list on the negatives of sugar are just as long as the ones on sucralose. So a really quick conclusion because I have been out here at this point so long, it's starting to get dark. I am by no means saying sucralose is safe. I am not telling you to continue to consume sucralose. What I am saying is Make sure you do your own research. Make sure that the information you get isn't clickbait. Make sure it isn't for views also. I hope I have been able to 
share with you, give you the knowledge that Splenda is a name brand and they have tons of great products, monk fruit, erythritol, allulose. I think what happened, it became demonized because those little packets have sucralose and maltodextrin in them. And maltodextrin is a big no-no. It is higher on the glycemic index than table sugar, meaning it is going to spike your blood sugar quicker than table sugar. I think that's how Splenda got such a bad name. Like I always say, research, 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 and then make the decision that is best for you and your health. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd love to have you as a member of my YouTube family. There's going to be tons of links and articles down in the description box along with discount codes and my other social media platforms if you'd like to come over there and hang out as well. I'm going to go fix me something to eat. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.